Yeah, hello and welcome to this uh, tutorial for mamoworld.com. My name is Matthias and today I'm going to show you again some uh, interesting techniques in After Effects and like in my last tutorial using the name your own price tool key tweak. So last time in the bouncing ball tutorial you've seen how to animate or how to modify an animation with a position property with lots of keyframes. And this time we are actually going to look at a mask uh, how to modify a mask with key tweak and the example I have here is I have this mask of the face of this girl and I actually want to first track it with the mask tracker so I right click on the mask and say track mask which brings me the tracker and then I say I want to uh, scale uh, to track uh, position scale rotation and skew you can actually track everything except for perspective because this will change the number of mask vertices which key tweak does not like so uh, but so we are going to track this track forward and as you can see the mask nicely follows the face and it introduces lots of key uh, keyframes so like a perfect application for key tweak and you can see in general uh, the mask is following the face and this is what you usually get for the mask tracker actually that it gives you a pretty good result but not like a hundred percent accurate result you can see here it, it, it's not really what we want to have and you would think hmm now I have like 90 percent of what I want but not 100 percent and to get the last 10 percent I, I cannot really do much about it you cannot really start modifying each of these hundreds of keyframes here to get the correct result but this is exactly where key tweak is going to help you. So you find key tweak once it's installed here in your window menu. It's available at a scripts among all the other Mamo World tools. Um, it's name your own price so you can decide on your own whether you want to download it for free or like pay uh, $10 to say thank you Matthias that you developed this nice tool for me. And um, in the last tutorial I showed this um, local mode here where you push around uh, the values with these arrows. You can in principle also do this with masks where you use this button to select actually the vertices of the masks that you want to manipulate. But usually with masks it's much more efficient to use the global mode. So you click here and now we are in global mode and let's see how this global mode of key tweak is actually working. The idea is the following. When you rotoscope, for example, is it's usually a good idea to say use as few keyframes as possible. And the great thing is that with a key tweak, what you can do is in this uh, global mode to say I go back to a duplicate of my mask, which has only as few keyframes as I really need. Um, and I do the modification on these few keyframes and then key tweak takes care of automatically applying all the changes you did on the few keyframes to this lots of keyframes. Yeah? It's like working with a few keyframes and letting key tweak take care of all the other keyframes automatically. It sounds a bit strange. Once you see it, you will see how amazing and easy this is. I start with selecting my mask and going to edit duplicate to create a copy. I move the copy on top and give it another color such that you can easily distinguish it from the other one. Um, and in this one, I actually delete my keyframes. I first hit the U key to only re reveal the mask pass, only my keyframe properties. And I click on the stopwatch to get rid of the keyframes. And now I say, okay, now I look through my time and see where the original mask is good and where it's not good and steal keyframes from it. Like, like here, it's still pretty good. And now when the face is moving, you can see here it starts getting off. So I go to the last position where it's still okay. This is this frame. I take this keyframe, say edit copy, go to my duplicate mask and say edit paste. Yeah. Now let's go further in time and let's say, okay, maybe he here we have this movement. And here is now the point where like most of the error is. Yeah, this is like a keyframe where I want to correct. So I take again my original mask, say edit copy this keyframe, go to the duplicate and say edit paste. Yeah. And now I start correcting this keyframe in my duplicate. Yeah. I do this by really just selecting here individual vertices and pulling them where they should be. Obviously I could be more accurate here but I think for the sake of the demonstration this is okay. Now let's see we have now two masks. One has just two keyframes, this one and this one 
and the other one has lots of keyframes. Yeah? And all we need to do now is to say we select both mask passes. It's important to, to no, do not just select the mask, but really the mask pass, because this is what you want to manipulate. Yeah, just select both properties. And now in key tweak, we make sure that we override the original. This means we want to really correct those keyframes and do not introduce all those keyframes on our duplicate. We want to override the original. And you uh, actually, I want to do it here globally, not just the work area. You can limit the effect on the work area if you want. And now, so with those two masks selected, selected, we just click key tweak. And you can see that now the original mask jumped on our corrected keyframe here to the position of the corrected one, of this one with the two. Yeah? And also on this keyframe where we copied it from here, it, it stayed, it, it's exactly the same. But in between you can see that the two masks do not really behave the same. Yeah? This is like all the changes, um, all the detailed information of all these keyframes is still preserved, but the change you did on the few keyframes here are intelligently also applied in an appropriate way to, to all these keyframes here. You can see that our result now, so the white mask, is now already much better, but it's still not yet perfect. So we can start introducing more keyframes. Like here in the middle, yeah, it's like the left edge is uh, pretty okay, but the red edge is, is not yet okay. We like to be with the red edge like closer to our original mask here. So we can either introduce a keyframe by just clicking. So now we say in our duplicate, the, the, the right edge is okay, but the left one should be rather more like uh, in the white one. So we, we fix it to make it look good. Yeah, it's really, it depends on the situation when you want to introduce a new key by, by, by clicking this button here or when you just copy a key from this mask. It really depends on which of the two one looks close, is closer to the actual result that you want to have. So here we want to correct, but uh, we actually want to do more corrections at once because let's say at this point here, you can also see the white mask is not fitting perfectly. Yeah, it's like, uh, at this point, it's still okay. So we copy a keyframe. I just do Command or Control C, and here Control V to paste it. But here it starts getting off again at the cheek. So I copy again Control C, and here Control V to paste. And now I adjust the red mask as needed just like this. So we did two changes now, this change here and this change here, but you don't need to tell KeyTweak about the details. It notices which keyframes have changed and which not. You just select again both masks and say, KeyTweak, do your job again. You can see now again the white mask sticks to the red mask wherever you performed changes. And in between, you can see it nicely follows the track. And so now with just a few keyframes, we really ju just adjusted these few keyframes and all the rest was adjusted by key tweak. Now we are finished with our modifications. I can delete the red mask again and you can see that our mask gut is way more accurate now than it has been in the beginning. And again, if you later notice, well, hmm, this one is still not perfect, no problem. You can just create another duplicate. I just duplicate my mask, move it on top, give it another color. remove all keyframes and say, well, at this point, I actually like to have a keyframe that I want to correct. And say, okay, at this point, the original mask was actually pretty okay. So I copy this keyframe and paste it here. Now I say from here to here, please key tweak, do my additional change. Again, I select both masks and say key tweak. Bam. And so it's easy at any point later to go back to fewer keyframes until you really got the mask that you want to have, which I guess makes the mask tracker in total way more useful. I have got another little tip for you now that is not really related to key tweak. And this is once you do these kinds of rotoscopings with a mask tracker, let me actually get rid of my duplicate mask here now. 
Uh, once you do these kinds of modifications with the mask tracker, often you do not just want to have one mask, but several masks. So here we isolated the face and now maybe we want to also isolate uh, the eyes. So let me quickly draw some masks around those. Again, I could be more accurate here, but for the sake of the example, set the mode to none. Um, to illustrate the idea, this should be good enough. Now, of course, you could track those two masks again separately with a mask tracker, but first this takes some time, and second, you can see here in these situations where the eyes are blinking, for example, the tracker definitely will not give you the result that you want to have. So what you can say is, well, we already have a pretty good track of the face, and we want to use the track from this mask, actually, and apply it to these other masks, too. And you can do this with another tool that I developed, which is called Mask Tracker Plus. You can get it again at ascripts.com. It's also part of my tracking bundle. Um, so here is Mask Tracker Plus. It's really easy, and if you know Mocha Import Plus, it's really a pretty similar, except that it works with the Mask Tracker. So what you do is you load tracking data, and you can load it literally from your tracked mask. So just select the mask pass and click Load. And now it says it loaded the data from, from the master mask here. And now you can say, what do you want to do with this tracking data? You can do lots of things. You can do a stabilization based on this track. You can move layers uh, with, the, with your mask. You can even do a corner pin uh, or a stabilized precomp. But what we actually want to do is we want to move other masks with this mask. So we just select this property, select the two masks that we want to move, and click Apply. And now you can see here, also, keyframes have been introduced on those two masks, and you can see both masks nicely move with our track now. And again, if they are not accurate, you can of course use t key tweak again to do the final tweaks. But you can see that here when the eyes were bl are blinking, this does not irritate the, the track at all, because, well, it has not taken the track from these eyes, but it's actually taking the tracks that we already did and that we already fine-tuned before. So this is a really powerful way to apply movement of one mask to other masks instead of retracking much faster. Just use the same track with the help of Mask Tracker Plus. Okay, I hope that this tutorial gave you some insights how to improve your rotoscoping workflows inside of After Effects, how to track masks and in particular that once your mask is not 100% accurate and you need it to be more accurate, there is no reason to throw away your track with all these keyframes. With the help of Key Tweak, it's really easy to fine tune your mask until it has the shape that you want to have. Okay, that's the end of this tutorial. I'm Matthias for marmoworld.com and I'm looking forward to see you again in the next tutorial.